put your tinfoil hats on, commanders, because we're going in. Not long ago, Aegis HQ got attacked. The attackers claimed that Aegis was building some sort of super weapon, but they never presented any type of proof or and Aegis denied these claims and accusations. After Aegis lost the fight, President of the Federation, Zachary Hudson, announced through Galnet News that he allows Aegis to move their HQ to Soul System. Now, we move to Pleiades Sector. Here we have an attacked settlement. Let's see, let's listen to the logs. Production is currently at 91%. The specifications for these new weapons are unique, so it's only natural we'd have teething problems when calibrating our machinery. Normally, head office would be sticking their oar in, but they've been conspicuous in their silence. Could be something to do with the fact that Aegis has given us the blueprints to the most sophisticated weaponry in the galaxy. The corporation's set to make a fortune when these prototypes go to mass production. Of course, we're also proud to be safeguarding the galaxy from the Thargoid threat. And it helps that Aegis is paying us a fortune for the privilege. Today, we have the royal visit. Spot check from the man at Aegis. He walked in, black suited and slick haired, hulking bodyguards like he was the president of the Federation or something. I'm not gonna lie, I was bloody intimidated. Especially since I was the one giving him the guided tour. He introduced himself as Mr. Black. I'm fairly sure that wasn't his real name, but I wasn't going to question it. He walked around the plant for about an hour and he didn't say a word. I was expecting the worst, but he just thanked me for the tour. Told me to keep up the good work and left. Keep up the good work. I'm taking that as a win. A message came in on an encrypted channel. It was Mr. Black himself. I'd recognise that voice anyway. He said the facility would be coming under attack imminently and we had to evacuate at once. It was sparse on details, but it was pretty convincing. I've told the floor supervisors to initiate evacuation protocols, but I can't leave yet. There's simply too much confidential material here. It has to be destroyed. I tried to contact head office for further instruction, but I couldn't get through. I hope I'm doing the right thing. The attack came. It wasn't raided. It was a Thargoid ship. Popped up on the scanners and set about destroying the facility. When it hit the main plant, I thought it was the end, but then... The federal ships arrived. Don't know where they came from. Maybe you just sent them. God, I managed to evacuate everyone in time. Death toll could have been catastrophic. As it stands, we lost a few billion credits in machinery, but I'll let the bean counters worry about that. I'm just glad no one was hurt. So what have we learned? The most sophisticated weapon in the galaxy was built here. Blueprints were in fact provided by Aegis and Aegis somehow knew that the Targoids were arriving and they warned the researchers. All of that happened before the Eagle Eye facility was built. So once again, they lied to the public. If you're new to the game and don't know what Eagle Eye is, it's basically a facility that was built by Aegis to be able to see or predict what systems will get attacked by the Targoids. So far we have found 11 planetary settlements that have been attacked by the Targoids, and nine of those have one small but interesting detail. Here we can find a bunch of Cain Macy containers. If we look up Cain Macy in the codex, then we can see that it's a shady company. Yet, there is nothing that links them to Targoids or Aegis directly. Now, if you've seen my previous tinfoil related videos, then you know that we've proven back in the day that all the Targoid attacked mega ships had Targoid related commodities on board. Way from uh, in the tide, I think, making more Reagan. So, the atmosphere can take much fuel, fuel away. Uh, you're a lot heavier, I don't think of course, it's... a sturdy amount. You get minus 30%, armor piercing plus 60%. Uh, armor piercing, yeah. But does it, it doesn't matter, armor piercing, isn't it? 
It's already 100. Because it's fucking... Yeah, I know. I don't understand it myself. But oh, <laughs> shit! We got a Thargoid sensor on the fucking uh, prison ship, boys. Got him! Yeah, boy! Back in the day, I didn't pay attention to it. But now it seems that attacked cargo ships were carrying Kane Macy containers as well. Kane Macy is supposed to be a mining company, right? So let's go to an attacked mining site where they were involved and see what we can find. Extraction was up to 650 tons a day, but I've had to put operations on hold. An excavator unearthed something in one of the shafts. It looks like some kind of ancient monument, I guess. Almost like an underground temple. I'm no expert, but it looks pretty damn old. I'd be surprised if this thing is human. Some of the guys suggested bulldozing the thing and carrying on with operations, but I'm not senior enough to make that call. I asked HQ to send someone to evaluate the find. What we could do with a xenoarchaeologist, really, but they'll probably just send a couple of suits, then tell us to flatten the place. You know, this could be an important find, but everything's about the bottom line with those guys. This is an emergency report. The site is under attack. Half my crew is dead and the rest of us have taken shelter underground. I can hear explosions on the surface. Hopefully we'll be safe down here. The monument must have sent a message. Acting like a beacon and bringing them down on top of us. Whatever they are, they seem damned angry. We should have demolished that thing when we had the chance. Mayday! Mayday! If anyone can hear this, I, I'm in Area 17F. Temperature is close to freezing. People have started going missing. I was in communication with an excavation crew in 16P, but they went dark a little while ago. I sent one of the foremen to check it out, but he hasn't come back. Looks quiet on the surface now, but that doesn't put me at ease. They could be down here with us, picking off the survivors one by one. If anyone receives this message, inform system authorities immediately. And make sure they send support ships. Whoever is out there means business. Jenkins couldn't take it anymore down here in the freezing dark. So he went up to the surface. I was on comms with him when he reached the top. He saw something that scared him half to death. Then the comm link went dead. Something's waiting for us up there. Or worse still, it's down here looking for us. Either way, I'm not going down without a fight. Explosives around the monument with trip switches at two meter intervals. I'm looking at that thing right now. It's pulsating like it's talking in some alien language, telling them to come and get us. But well, I'm gonna shut it up for good. 200 pounds of premium grade explosives should do the trick. This reminds me of Enra. Someone is making all these people work on one thing, but in fact they're working on something else. Completely different. So, who gave the order to build these settlements? And why were they attacked? Well, by now we know that Targoids don't attack randomly. They only do so when provoked or when they know that we are that we took something from them. Here's a good example. In the book, Tales from the Frontier, there's a story about a salvage crew that finds an abandoned research facility. 
inside, everything is powered down, and when they look through every room, they find this huge place with a Targoid ship inside. The crew figures out that it's dead, but as soon as they turn the facility's power on, the ship comes back to life. Apparently that's a thing now, but anyway, the ship immediately starts sending out a signal. Sometime after that, its friends arrive and nuke the whole place. Yet, they let the people live. This shows us that they would rather kill one of their own than to let it suffer. We also know that everything Targoid related that we've seen so far is alive. Here's an example from one of the attacked elements. We've secured a specimen. One of our suppliers purchased the probe on the black market. It was expensive, but worth it. This thing is magnificent. It's sitting in the containment unit now. We're keeping it on a gurney made from meta-alloy to prevent any damage to the lab. It's not a perfect solution, but at least it hasn't eaten through the floor. Tomorrow I'm gonna find out exactly what makes this thing tick. I will now continue with the physical examination. Let the record show that Professor Collins is present to assist. The probe is organic in appearance, but seems to possess many inorganic properties. The outer casing is made of elements we have been unable to identify. Thus far, radiocarbon testing has proved inconclusive. Attempts to dissect the outer carapace with a conventional scalpel have also been unsuccessful. We simply don't have a blade that can pierce the shell. I am now proceeding with electro-cauterization. That's it! The laser has made an incision. The probe appears to be reacting to the laceration. It's pulsating. Uh, Professor Bouchard, I'm reading an increase in atmospheric pressure within the lab. I understand this right. <laughs> I must say this is fascinating. Upon making my primary incision, the probe emitted an electromagnetic pulse that shut down the entire laboratory and most of the research facility. Luckily, auxiliary power kicked in and kept our life support online. If it hadn't, we might have found ourselves a little short of air. The tech team has restored power to the main systems, but most of my hardware has been destroyed. My examinations will have to be put on hold until the equipment can be replaced or repaired. Who knows how long that will take. There is one curious thing, though. Since it released the pulse, the probe has been emitting a constant signal. We have no idea what it's trying to communicate. But comms have assured me they have their best cryptographer on the job. the probe was giving off has been answered. We're under attack and evacuation protocols have been initiated. Whatever's assaulting us has systematically taken the settlement apart. We've tried to hail it, to show them we mean no harm, but there's no answer. I've been given the order to evacuate. I'm leaving a ton of research behind, but there's no time to upload it to the mainframe. I just hope we can get out of here before the whole... Now it makes sense why they would attack, innit? A new question pops up in my mind. Why do they take the escape pods? But people who are running free, they just let go. I guess. Yep. Coming to you. Coming to you. Yeah. It didn't scan me for some reason. Want to scan it? I can't. Come on, move. Why is it I bottom? Oh, there you go. It's leaving, eh? Seems like. So 
So we made it to the hangar. No sign of trouble, then wham! An alien ship appears and starts gliding toward us. I froze. I I'm not ashamed to admit it. Everyone else did, too. We thought we were done. But the ship just floated there, like it was looking at us, thinking about his next move. And it let out this sound. And it just drifted away. Who knows why it let us go? I can't explain it. But this isn't the time for questions. We gotta get out of here. This will be my last report. Just know that you left us to die out here. And I hope that haunts you forever. Maybe people have to be asleep or sedated for easy or safe transport. But where are these people being taken to and why? Back in the day, we had this crazy imperial researcher. He was taking people against their will and he was doing experiments with these with this new drug. What it did was basically when you take the drug, it makes you faster, smarter, you know, everything is better about you. But you depend on the drug. As soon as you stop taking it, you pretty much die. So maybe the same research is still going on right now because this that guy was also working with the Targoids. Like directly with them. His facility the facility he was working in, they built it for him, the Targoids. But anyway, it seems like somebody is feeding us to the Targoids. Well, I'm not saying that they're eating us, it's just obvious that people are being taken for research purposes. While Aegis simply lets it all happen. Notice that when their weapon production was endangered, Aegis came running to save it and its scientists. But when it's miners or convicts or weird religious people, Aegis doesn't care. They're all expendable. Speaking of religious people and convicts, listen to these logs. As if running this facility wasn't challenging enough, now we're having problems with transit. I suppose that's what we get for using private contractors instead of official transport. The pilot gave some cockamamie story about being intercepted by an unidentified ship. Apparently it looks alien and closed down his systems. Left him stranded for a while. <laughs> Whatever. I wasn't in the mood to listen to some void crazy pilot's inane wittering. All I know is by the time he got here, the prisoners were ready to riot. I've sent a strongly worded memo to the authorities demanding we use union-approved contractors from now on. We have an emergency situation. At first, I thought there'd been a breakout. I couldn't have been more wrong. They jumped in right on top of us. The proximity relays didn't catch a thing. It was just two ships, but they shut down our defenses before we even had a chance to get them online. And they hit the facility with some kind of pulse. Life support is still functional, but all of their systems are fried. Luckily, the wardens had the presence of mind to initiate manual lockdown on all cell blocks, so the prisoners remain contained. Unfortunately, I'm sealed inside the command center. I've sent a mayday signal and I tried hailing whoever attacked us, but... So far, no luck. We'll just have to wait this out and hope for the best. Someone has to come soon. We lost contact with Central two days ago. Surely the alarm will have been raised by now. I'm trying to jerry-rig the surveillance system so I can see what's going on in the rest of the facility, but the temperature's dropping by the hour. Sure as hell isn't making the job any easier. The life support readings say everything's fine. So why is it so cold in here? There's gotta be at least 20 below in here. My hands are numb. Gotta be honest, I've had better days. I've got the surveillance system working again. Looking at the monitors now. Prisoners, the wardens, every last one of them's gone. Whatever shut the, the facility down must have taken them. But why? 
And why did they drop the temperature? I don't know. But I do know. I'm freezing to death. Can't decide what's worse. Slowly dying in this ice cube. Or being taken by whatever it is out there. Yes, I don't have much of a choice. Why would anyone build a prison outside of the bubble, away from the civilization? To feed or to, to sacrifice people to the Targoids? I think someone is just doing research very carefully, in a way that when shit hits the fan, there will always be a scapegoat, someone to blame. As in, some cultists got taken away while waiting for, their, for God? It's their own fault, they volunteered. A prison got attacked? Well, who cares? They're criminals and they shouldn't have been they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Miners find an alien temple and get wiped out? Well, it's part of a job. They they knew the dangers. I guess that's what they would say. What I'm trying to say is we are being played and lied to. Targoid attacks started because of ages and it's their labs that were targeted. And eventually they've built a few secret labs, because they announced so, they told us so on Galnet News. And maybe the same secret labs are being attacked right now. Maybe that's what's going on. But now that they are moving to Seoul, I believe that Targoids will follow. As soon after, Aegis will start crying through Galnet News that the humanity is under attack. Well, in fact, they are the target, and not the humanity. So what do you think? Is Aegis in charge of these shenanigans? Is Kane Macy just a scapegoat? Or is some higher power that we haven't heard of yet on top of it all? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to stay up to, up to date with our upcoming videos, and take care.